Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today a subject, a sobering subject, but one that's very, very important and I think that all of our viewers are going to learn more about. Yes, we have not done a show on fentanyl before that we've entitled the show with one word, fentanyl. Uh, but just to underline how important it is, that's a topic that uh, our president talked to the uh, leader of China about on this recent trip. And they made some agreements about the uh, underlying articles that are necessary to make fentanyl and mm -hmm. slowing down the distribution in the United States. So it's important in Oklahoma, it's important in every state in the union, and we're pleased to be able to bring it the two folks in Oklahoma that know the most about it. We'll get into the science. We'll also get into the progress or lack of progress. How are we doing with dealing with this societal issue? It's all coming up today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. Right now, six feet can feel like a long ways away. But from six feet, we can still smile at each other. From our doorways and our stairways, from opposite sides of the street and opposite sides of the country, through fear and frustrations, we can remind each other that we are still here for each other because we can still smile at each other and we're not going anywhere. Military service ran in my blood, starting from my father, which joined the Navy, on the Chickasaw side, my uncle, which served in the United States Army. I'm Benjamin Espinosa, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, and I'm Chickasaw. I went to the Secretary of Defense's staff at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., which ultimately led to becoming a combat support technician for Naval Special Warfare, specifically SEAL Team 10. I think to be proud and to love your tribe, to love being Chickasaw, you also have to love being American. You also have to love everything that America stands for. Equality, perseverance, professionalism, and power. I want my family to know that their father is a good person, but also feels that he has an obligation to the country and to love this nation. Anything worth having is worth dying for. The military and the country owes me nothing. I owe it everything. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We're just delighted to have two guests join us today to talk about this very sober subject of fentanyl. <coughs> uh, Donna Nelson has been with us before, and this is her second visit. Uh, to the show. You may recall Donna uh, coming on and talking about being the scientific advisor uh, on the uh, hit television show Breaking Bad. Well, she did that and she's back in Oklahoma working hard now uh, at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, she is a native of Oklahoma, uh, grew up in, uh, uh, let's see. You follow. You follow, yeah. Uh, she did her undergraduate work at the University of Oklahoma, did her graduate work at the University of Texas, Austin, uh, which she asked me to emphasize. <laughs> and <clears throat> she uh, did postgraduate work with a Nobel laureate uh, chemist uh, of uh, quite uh, great esteem a number of years ago. So she has worked at the highest levels in her uh, uh, occupation as a chemist. She's on the faculty at the University of Oklahoma. She has done over 200 publications. She's been the president of the American Chemical Society in 2016. She's been a Fulbright Scholar, and we're just really pleased to bring her back to join us. Donna, glad to have you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, next to Donna is Allie Timmons. Allie is uh, with the o Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, OSBI. She is a forensic toxicologist at OSBI. She did her undergraduate work at uh, UCO. Uh, she has uh, done, uh, she's working in the chemical area, the forensic uh, chemical area for the OSBI, which of course involves fentanyl uh, completely. 
she's an adjunct professor at the University of Central Oklahoma. She's a certified internal forensic laboratory auditor. I got that out. Uh, and this is her first visit. Allie, really glad to have you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Welcome, Allie, and welcome back, Donna. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Allie, what kind of work uh, do you do at the OSBI? I'm a criminalist in the Forensic Toxicology Unit at the OSBI. I typically analyze blood and urine for the presence of drugs and alcohol uh, for DUI cases and drug facilitated sexual assault cases. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, five and a half years now. Yeah. Uh, Donna, tell us about what your life has been like since Breaking Bad broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as you said, I'm a professor of chemistry at the University of Oklahoma, and uh, I teach organic chemistry. So I have large classes of students, you know, pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dent, pre-pharmacy, and I enjoy that a lot. Uh, but then each of us has research, and so this has become my area of research. I sort of fell into it because so many people would call me and say, I heard you were the science advisor for Breaking Bad. Will you help me with my project? Mm -hmm. And so finally people were asking me about projects that involve fentanyl, and I became interested in it. Well, from a chemistry standpoint, what can you tell us about the drug? So it, it, is, it is really deadly, just as your, uh, um, the, the quote that you put up on the screen said. It, um, when we've had some uh, symposia at national meetings and a person from the National Academies came and talked with us in a break at, uh, at San Francisco and said that this is the biggest problem facing the United States today. Now that was his mm -hmm. opinion from the National Academy. So um, that told me that I was correct in deciding to do research on this and so we're in a, an area, working in an area, and there are many of us working in this area. And the thing that makes me feel great, and I'm sure it makes Allie feel great also, is that we believe that we can really help save lives mm -hmm. by, by uh, you know, mitigating this. What is it about the chemistry of, of fentanyl that makes it so deadly? Well, it's, um, it's, it's, it has, it's a lot more flexible than say morphine and so it can uh, change its shape it can move or it can yeah change its shape and fit into certain active pockets inside the body or only part of the molecule can fit inside the pocket whereas uh, morphine is just you know huge and it doesn't have much flexibility and so um, fentanyl is an interesting uh, molecule because of that. It's totally different. Do you want to say something on this? Um, I would just say that, like you said, it's flexible. It can fit into those, um, those pockets like she was talking about. And those are what cause the effects uh, like respiratory depression, being unable to breathe. Um, so th that's what makes it so deadly is that it fits in that uh, those pockets much easier. We have active sites inside our bodies that these molecules must fit into. And so uh, things like heroin is, is large and bulky. It, when, when I talk to lay people about it, I say it's shaped sort of like a basketball. You know, it's big, it's not flexible. And when you think of fentanyl, the way I have described it, is that it's sort of like a garden hose with kinks in it. So it's really flexible. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> Why would somebody develop a uh, product like this? Uh, what uh, legitimate use does it have, if any? Um, it was developed in the 1960s for pain relief. Um, it's often given in an ambulance or at the hospital for severe pain. It can also be prescribed to people with um, debilitating diseases like cancer or multiple sclerosis to help with those pain needs. Um, and it can also be used as an anesthetic to put people to sleep for procedures, so it's very powerful. One of the really good things about fentanyl, when it was developed, um, they uh, said, and, and I, I believe this is true, that it puts people under rapidly, and then they'll be under for a short time, and then they come back out uh, of the sedation rapidly also. So it's just a short time. Mm -hmm. 
We have a graphic that I'd like uh, the crew to put up on the screen now that's going to show, I believe, the, uh, the overall death rate that has been attributed to fentanyl. And what you're going to see here is a very sharp rise. Donna, you're the, yeah. you're the statistics person. Go over this. Yeah, so these are data from the CDC that have been plotted. And so you can see the fentanyl death rate. Um, the years are running across the bottom of the screen, and the deaths are on the axis going uh, vertically. And so you can see that the deaths due to fentanyl were sort of not that high until it comes to about 2013, and then they start rising. Mm -hmm. And that last um, point on the plot is for t uh, 2022. And so you can see wow. it rose so rapidly, and it sort of caught people off guard. It's blindsided people. And so it, for, for scientists, it takes us time to, say, apply for funding, get the funding, you know, do the research, et cetera. And so it takes a while to respond to things like this. Allie, the OSBI at some point obviously had to have this start to appear on its radar screen as something they were going to have to deal with. Can you take us through this timeline? How has OSBI's involvement entered and grown since this uh, escalating rate began? Um, particularly back in 2019 is when we started seeing it more and more. Um, between the years 2019 and 2021, uh, the deaths in Oklahoma uh, increased sixfold. Um, and so just in 2021, that was when we started seeing it more, more often. And then last year it got into our top 10 reported drugs, and now it's in uh, even higher on the list. Well, <clears throat> what, what uh, kind of work is done at the toxicology level to determine uh, what's wrong with the patient and to make a determination that, oops, that's fentanyl? Um, so you would do analyses on their um, blood or their urine and uh, to determine if it's present. Um, if it's someone who has died from fentanyl, then you would uh, quantitate how much is in their, their blood or their urine to figure out if it was the cause of their death. All right, let's get to a break. We're talking about fentanyl. We're talking about both its science. We're talking about law enforcement and how it applies to trying to head off this very dangerous situation in Oklahoma. We'll be right back. You're watching The Verdict. At Wittenburg, we're litigators. That's all we do. All of our clients, some sort of wrong has occurred to them. We try to right that wrong. Corporate America, they have all the power. It's sort of like going against an army. I like helping the underdog. That's what gets me up out of bed every day. Our success rate is phenomenal, but that's not all they get. We care about people. I'm very proud of what we've been able to do for our clients, and I'm looking forward to what we're going to do in the future. There's still a lot of wrongs that need to be righted. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. The Vet Hero Office at the University of Central Oklahoma, it is a one-stop shop for veterans when they're trying to get their education. I call it my encore job. I get to take care of veterans. We help them transition. I was that guy that transitioned after 24 years, and in the end, GI Bill is a benefit that those soldier, sailors, airmen, marine earned. It was the thing that made us the greatest country in the world coming out of World War II, and it will continue to do the same thing for this future generation of service members. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're discussing fentanyl with Dr. Donna Nelson and Allie Timmons, who is uh, with the OSBI. Uh, Donna, can you talk nationally about the fentanyl's use? And it's, it's, was it just my perception that there were geographic pockets around the country that seemed to have greater outbreaks back in that 2013 through 2019 period 
uh, than other places? There are, but also these can change mm -hmm. uh, year by year. Why, so, why do they happen in geographic pockets? Why isn't it nationally all at once? Well, there's not any one good reason. So, for example, there's a, a, um, a lot of it in Texas because they're near the Mexican border. There's a lot of it in California. So some of it can have to do with where the chemicals are coming in. Yeah, so it's the you know. supply, supply-driven. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then, uh, strangely, um, there are others that are clustered around, say, Ohio, mm -hmm. Kentucky, Tennessee, and there, I do not know, but I have read that it's because there are uh, a lot of students or young people there who really you know, don't have a lot to do, and so they just get, in, get involved with drugs. Um, one national piece of uh, headlines recently, which I was very sad to read, was that um, the states that had the most rapid rise in the last, I think it was the last year, mm -hmm. first place was, went to California, second and third went to Tennessee and Kentucky, and fourth was Oklahoma. And what is Oklahoma doing about it? Oh, well, we're doing as much as we can, but the state of Oklahoma, I think, has a, this fabulous program in which uh, they will actually send out this antidote. Mm -hmm. uh, Nar Hold it up here. Okay. Narcan or naloxone. Narcan is the brand name. Naloxone mm -hmm. is the um, actual chemical. And once you, you can you can obtain this by simply going to the website www.okimready.org um, and fill in your name and address, and the state of Oklahoma will send it to you for free. There, it's on the you, screen. There. Yeah, if you live in the state of Oklahoma, and when you get it, on the outside of the box. It says don't open until it's time to use it, but I would recommend that you go ahead and open it. Each one contains two sprayers, you know, and so there's the first one and the instructions. So I would recommend opening it up and getting the instructions out and reading the instructions so you'll actually know how to administer it. So if, sadly, if uh, a situation comes in which you need to administer it to people, you will understand the instructions. And this, this you, you just open it up and then you spray it in the person's nose mm -hmm. um, if they've overdosed. And it can bring them right back. Mm -hmm. Well, and, now, is time of the essence in administering Narcan? Absolutely. How, how is that? Um, these, like she said earlier, these uh, fentanyls can have a very rapid onset, an effect, and so if it's uh, snorted or um, injected, that's a very quick delivery system in the body, and so it can have profound effects very, very quickly. So getting that Narcan in and getting that reversed in their body is very important. Um, <clears throat> would, what is the... Uh, average age approximately when kids start becoming uh, involved with uh, fentanyl? Well, how young? It, uh, there have been instances reported, you know, going all the way down to just a few months, but there that's probably coming from their parents yes. or someone else. Um, the, the death rates start really increasing in the late teen years and then through the uh, 20s and 30s, and there are a lot of death rates on up into maybe the mid 40s. That's where it's highest. And so that's why I think that one of the things that we could best do is to um, try to reach our students yeah. in, high in, in high school, but also in college especially. And there are multiple reasons. One is that the students in college are sort of a captive audience. We have them there, we can talk to them, we can tell them about the problems. And, uh, you know, the fact that if they're doing street drugs, those street drugs may be laced with fentanyl. If they purchase a street drug, it may not be what they think they're getting. It may be fentanyl. And, and so, we have the students there, and these students are thinking about their future. They're working on their future, and um, 
they're very ambitious, and so I think that one of the best things that we could do would be to um, try to inform the students. If you were a parent of a junior high school student uh, and you were worried you, about what's going on in their school or in Oklahoma generally, <clears throat> what, as a parent, would you tell, how would you tell your child about fentanyl and its dangers and its uh, effects? I would tell them stay away from street drugs because if you go out and purchase a street drug, it's not like getting it from a pharmacy. If you get it from a pharmacy or a doctor, you can trust it. But if you get something from the street, you don't know what you're getting. And also any parent, I, I would strongly recommend that any parent get these. I mean, they're free. You, you can just go in and, and uh, order these. They'll be shipped to your home and then you have it there. And if you walk into your child's bedroom and your child is passed out on the bed, you have this and you, it, it, their lives may be saved by simply having this. Don, I hear the term rainbow fentanyl. What is that? Um, I'm going to let Allie answer okay. that. She hasn't had a question in a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rainbow fentanyl is just illicit fentanyl or illegal fentanyl that's being uh, produced on the street, um, but it's in all different colors, and it's just to um, subvert um, trafficking and uh, laws uh, so they just make it different colors just to make it look a little different. What? There were stories that the, the rainbow fentanyl was being put into pastel colors to sort of attract children. But then other people have said, no, that's true, because the rainbow fentanyl looks sort of like candy. And in some cases, it's actually heart-shaped, like mm -hmm. Valentine's so Day it, candy. it just comes across less harmful or, le or harmless. It could attract children, yes. A Allie, what is, what is law enforcement's role in all of this? Uh, and, and what are the legalities and the penalties for people who are selling Narcon or are selling fentanyl and, and get caught? Um, if you're caught with fentanyl, um, you, you could face a very high um, uh, incarceration. Uh, there's a bill actually that we heard about uh, was it yesterday, two days ago, from uh, Representative uh, Rosecrans, and they're trying to increase that, that length of time that you can spend in jail if you're caught with a, even just one gram, which is a very small amount of fentanyl. But it's um, not that small. That would kill 500 people. Yeah, it's a one small gram amount. Would kill 500 people. Wow. Yeah, it's a small amount of, of powder, but it, it is very deadly, and it's a lot when you consider how much it can yeah. do. If yeah. it's pure, it would kill 500 people. Uh, and that's another thing that is so bad about fentanyl is only two milligrams is a deadly dose. Two milligrams is a deadly dose. Well, I have read that some exposure can occur through just touching with your hand the uh, drug. Is that, is that right? That is, that is not true. Not true. Um, that I have seen that a lot in uh, the headlines and whatnot, but it actually would take a very, very large amount over a very long time uh -huh. for it to go through your skin. They're, they're actually formulated fentanyl in patches to facilitate that transfer of the drug from or into your skin. It won't just go in easily. If you have a cut or an open sore, that would be a different uh, situation, but there's actually had to be patches made to make the fentanyl go through people's skin. Or if the person rubbed it in their eye, or rubbed it yes. in your nose mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, that would Well, we're transfer. nearing the end of the show. I just wanted to thank both of you for coming on and thanks for your work in this area. When we come back, we will once again give that website information thank so you. people can go on and, and learn more and potentially uh, sign up to receive the, the free NARC. Great. Yeah. And thank you again so much for having us. Well, you're this always is welcome. wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah, you very thanks. much. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. This is the epidemic of my generation. This is my HIV, this is my black plague. In the midst of one of our state's largest crises, Oklahomans are dying from this preventable and treatable disease on a daily basis. We believe there's hope. That little pill will cause destruction through your whole life. 
Watch the entire award-winning nine-part docuseries Killing Pain, made available by Fighting Addiction Through Education at KillingPain.com. It used to be okay in hospitals. It used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay. Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. When you have uh, uh, children coming from a different lifestyle, different mindset, you have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we've tried to do with these kids. You will always be mom and dad to me. We're back on the set of The Verdict, uh, a, a sobering reminder of just how fentanyl has uh, contributed to so much harm in our society, and we hope today's show is helpful to people. Yes, we try to bring to you things that are topical, and uh, this is certainly getting a lot of attention, and we got the two guests that uh, we thought could tell our viewers about it uh, best. A, little, a lot of website information to hand off to you. First of all, Dr. Donna Nelson is a professor of chemistry at the University of Oklahoma. All of the work that's done down in Norman and elsewhere can be found at ou.edu. And then uh, Allie Timmons is with the OSBI. Their website is osbi.ok.gov. Then we have the website where you can order uh, Narcon. It's okimready.org o-k-i-m-r-e-a-d-y dot org. We'll see you next week.